I'm Diane Spire, and I'm delighted to be here today. As the mother of two boys, when the time came for us to be expanding our family, I wanted to add a daughter to the group. Back then, I was spending a lot of time in the UCLA Biomedical Library, reading all about sex selection, and really wanting to follow the directions to um, essentially choose the sex of my child. And the reason for this was that in my husband's side of the family, there had been no females born for many generations. So I felt I needed to take a scientific approach to this. And um, we were also in the middle of moving from California to New York. And within a couple of weeks of um, following the directions, my daughter, Marielle, was conceived. Marielle and I were attached at the hip as a nursing couple for the first two years of her life, and I was delighted to have a daughter. As she grew older and her personality began to emerge, the differences between us became apparent. She has a fiery temperament, and her communication can get scrambled. She was born with mercury retrograde. And being the younger sister of two high-achieving brothers was challenging for her. So helping her to grow up with a good sense of self-esteem when her brothers would tease her was an important element in my parenting. When she was seven, her younger brother Jasper was born as the result of the creation of a holistic weekend intensive for pregnant couples called the Birth Empowerment Workshop. And we were inspired to practice what we preached. She remained the only girl child in the family and she's probably the most successful of all of my children. So things took a dramatic turn when I chose to follow my heart into a relationship with someone who was British, and I got divorced. Marielle was 17 at the time. She was in her last year of high school, and of all of our children, she seemed to have the hardest time. Her sense of abandonment was hidden behind her rage for a number of years. And in fact, we didn't actually talk directly to the point until she was getting married herself and planning to relocate from New York to California 10 years after I immigrated to the UK. Somehow the changes in her life triggered this issue for her and our relationship went through many, one of many difficult periods of distance. Marielle, more than any of my children, has a powerful effect on me and maybe some of you know this to be true for yourselves. When we're out of sorts with each other, I don't do very well. And sometimes it's going to last for a long time. When she became pregnant for the first time and sent me an email about a pregnancy issue, I was aware that this was not going to be a viable pregnancy a long time before she came to this conclusion herself. So as a birth professional, I started sending information to her in order to prepare her for what was to come. But this was not what she needed. I was confused about which hat was I wearing, a birth professional or a mother? and I got it wrong. So when the missed miscarriage happened early on and she needed a D and C, she was not receptive to hearing from me at that time. So I asked a birth colleague and a family friend to debrief her about the miscarriage and this was a surrogate mother she could relate to. As a birth professional with a special interest in the postpartum period, I've been dedicated to helping families get off to the right start for more than a generation. With early discharge from hospital being the norm now, parents don't get a chance to learn how to take care of themselves or their babies like they used to when they would stay in the hospital for a couple of days after the birth. In the past, nurses and midwives would provide support and assistance with breastfeeding during the hospital stay. Now mothers go home unprepared and lacking knowledge for what to do once they're home alone with their baby. And in some places, they may be on their own for the first six weeks until they've had their first postpartum visit. When Marielle became pregnant again, I made plans to be there with her in the first weeks after my grandson was born. This time, I waited for her to ask for information before I sent any. It took a while for her to warm to me again during that pregnancy. But growing up with a mother who taught natural childbirth classes, I thought that some of that would have rubbed off onto her. But instead, her first negative experience caused her to seek the medical model and to rely on it. I had to accept that she had her own approach to birth and parenting and was working within her own comfort levels. 
Another example of our differences, as a mother, it was important that I support her in the choices that she made. Being able to overcome my own bias for all things natural was a challenge, and it expanded my awareness of how to encourage all mothers to feel positive about their experience of birth and parenting. She struggled through the transition to parenthood with a baby who lost weight and didn't regain it for several weeks. And the concern that she was not producing enough milk for him played into her, her anxieties about being a parent. I watched her sense of, of defeat grow larger and did what I could to support her however she needed. Because I was nearby, sometimes staying at her home and then sometimes staying with a lifelong friend, uh, she was able to call on me for help and assistance, and I was her postpartum doula. After one of her visits to the pediatrician over the baby's weight, she came home feeling despondent and upset. I waited a while, and then I knocked on her door to see if she wanted to talk about what happened. Tearfully, she told me that the doctor was recommending that she supplement with formula because Cooper had still not gained back his birth weight. From where I was sitting on the bed, I said to her, I think this mother needs a little mothering right now. And from where I was sitting, I shifted my position and took her into my arms and held her for a good long time. As she held tight to me and let the sobs come, I knew that that was the rapprochement that we needed to reconnect at a deep level again. So when I returned a month later for another two weeks, she couldn't wait to have me back. During that time, we talked about how little information there is about the postpartum period and that there needed to be a book about it. The book hadn't been written. I decided to write it, now in progress, called The Handbook for the Postnatal Period. My focus is on what's positive about this challenging and pivotal, pivotal moment in time, about what works, and that there's an abundance of information to encourage a healthy and happy transition. A couple of months later, Marielle called me and said, you know that book you're writing? I want to create an app for it. I thought, wow, what a 21st century idea that is. It's amazing. I love the idea. It was recognizing that women, or this generation of women having babies, are getting their information from the internet and social media, and less so from books and classes. United as mother and daughter, Marielle and I created the first postpartum app called Digital Doula, and you now have that on your, on your tables, because initially they vanished this morning and they weren't on the outside table, so there they are. We collaborated on this project, bringing knowledge and experience from different generations and from different perspectives together to assist new mothers and fathers move through that time as smoothly as possible. There's a real shortage of quality postpartum care, especially in places like the United States where there isn't a built-in system for new parents. Digital doula can be a resource that compensates for early hospital discharge and this lack of care. It's an exciting platform for sharing wisdom that can really make a difference in getting new parents off to a good start. Collaborating hasn't always been easy, we have different styles of communication and we don't always see eye to eye. I like to talk things through and she finds conversation to be a bit exhausting. When we received important feedback from Apple about the app, we needed to talk about it despite her resistance. And we came up with some good ideas about how to improve it with new sections. She had to admit that it was a good thing to, talk, to have that conversation in this particular instance. Collaborating has helped us understand each other in ways beyond what the mother-daughter relationship has been. So it was hard for me when she pulled back from the project within weeks of it being launched. She was the pregnant mother of a toddler and she was working full time. We struggled to communicate with each other for several months. Collaboration also tuned me into this generation of childbearing women and how different it is from when I was teaching childbirth preparation for 20 years at the end of the 20th century. I've learned to be more tolerant of choices that are different from my teachings and to appreciate that freedom of choice is defined by the women who are making those choices. I also came to realize that even though I have a tremendous amount of expertise about the childbearing year, I had to step back and allow my grown-up daughter to walk down her own path during her transition to parenthood. Her choices, her parenting, her life. 
Another grandson was born in June, and I have yet to meet him. But during some personal life challenges recently, Marielle was one of my best supports in helping me think through some huge decisions and processes. Despite our differences, she was there for me, and I am here for her. I'm her mother, not the expert, and I've learned a powerful lesson for spaciousness in parenting as she mothers her children. Thank you for listening.